We are agreed. The next item of business is topical questions. And we'll start with question number one from Daniel Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the integration of British Transport Police and Police Scotland. Cabinet Secretary, Hamza Youssef. Throughout the re-planning process commissioned by, the Scottish, by Scottish Ministers, we have committed to listening to stakeholders. As part of that re-plan, recent advice from Police Scotland on a range of issues and the timing of implementation, particularly on uh, realignment re of ICT, has emerged. Based on that information, I've decided that we will re-examine all options for the devolution of railway policing with clear governance structures that ensure accountability to the Scottish Parliament. Full integration of railway policing into Police Scotland as legislated for by the Scottish Parliament remains a long-term goal and we will keep that commencement date of the Act under review. However, there is clearly a need to identify interim arrangements that can give effect more quickly to the Smith Commission's cross-party recommendation to devolve railway policing to the Scottish Parliament. The absolute priority for all of those involved is the safety and security of officers, staff and of course those who use Scotland's railways. I want to pay tribute to the ongoing commitment of officers and staff of both police services who I look forward to engaging with uh, on this matter in the very near future. I will commit, of course, to keep Parliament fully updated on progress. Daniel Johnson. I thank the Minister for that response. Indeed, I also welcome him to his position and I look forward to our future exchanges as the new Cabinet Secretary. And I believe the Cabinet Secretary deserves credit for listening to experts, unions and officers and reviewing the future of devolution of railway policing. However, if he was really listening, he would know that full integration is not possible, or at the very least that both its cost and timescales are a complete mystery, because that was the message from the SPA board meeting last week. So in his review, will he not just put off full integration on an interim basis, but rule it out altogether? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I say, the current uh, priority, the immediate priority, is to find interim arrangements where we, I think, have cross-party uh, concerns around, for example, the accountability or lack thereof uh, to this parliament uh, of British Transport Police, and that's something that has to be rectified. So that is the immediate priority. Uh, and as I say, the, the long-term goal would be to keep full integration under review. I think that is a sensible thing to do because there are benefits of full integration, which again came out in evidence sessions uh, during the debate and from evidence of stakeholders, for example, such things as uh, a single command structure and so on and so forth. But that, frankly, is not the immediate priority. The immediate priority, in order to give certainty, of course, to staff, to officers and others, and to, of course, uh, very importantly, ensure that there is accountability and democratic accountability of BTP, uh, is to come to some interim solutions. And what I would say in that respect uh, is my door will be very open to stakeholders, but also, I should say, to, to all members of the opposition to engage uh, and to listen to those ideas that might well come forward from across the chamber. Daniel Johnson. The Cabinet Secretary knows that if there was a viable route forward for full integration, it would have been found by now. Two years on, and we are no closer to knowing the costs or the timescales to make this happen. And a two-month review is simply not going to find an answer in that time. So does the Cabinet Secretary not recognise that as long as full integration remains on the table, there remains a great uncertainty for officers and staff? And if he does, is it not true that, uh, the, 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 and that the conclusion of his review is inevitable, that all is he is doing is, is prolonging the uncertainty which is ultimately unnecessary? I, I, know, I disagree with his analysis for, for a couple of reasons. One is that the review that we'll be undertaking, the engagement we'll be having with stakeholders, uh, will not be focused on finding a timetable uh, and a timeline for full integration. Uh, it will be in and around what will be the other options that we can explore to give effect to the Smith Commission's cross-party recommendations of the devolution uh, of railway policing to Scotland. So that will be the purpose of that uh, engagement. In terms of full integration, as I say, that remains a, a long-term goal which will be kept under review. So therefore, if he is right, uh, and, and, and uh, those that oppose full integration are right. As I say, that is something that will be kept under review. It is not the immediate priority. The immediate priority is to find uh, other options that will give effect to the Smith Commission. But I would, I would give him that, that challenge, and, and, and he and I spoke when I was uh, uh, put into position in my first week in the role, that uh, he, he knows my approach is one uh, where I'll look for good ideas wherever they come from uh, across the chamber. So I look forward to hearing his proposals uh, on the other options uh, to give effect to the Smith Commission's recommendations. Liam Kerr. Thank you, President Officer. Presiding Officer, will the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the Commission service model, which he previously opposed, is now very much on the table? 
Cabinet Secretary. I, I don't want to prejudge the engagement that I'm about to have uh, with stakeholders. Some of that engagement is taking, being taken forward today between officials and stakeholders and over tomorrow. And I will engage personally, of course, uh, with stakeholders too. But uh, certainly we should be looking for good ideas from wherever they come from. I know the Commission model. There were some reservations in the Commission model. And I think they, 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 they are legitimate to express. Uh, but you know, I don't want to prejudge that. But certainly we were looking and re-examining all of the options that have been considered before, but also if there are other options that haven't been considered uh, before to be brought forward and to be examined as part of this uh, process. Liam MacArthur. Thank you. Can I also uh, join in congratulating uh, the Cabinet Secretary on his uh, new appointment? Does he not, though, now regret uh, rejecting the amendment I lodged at stage three to delay the implementation uh, of this uh, merger at the very least? Will he give an assurance to this Parliament that detailed business plans will be developed on any options that are being consulted upon? Parliament will have a, a, a role uh, in determining how we go forward, given that the uh, Chief Constable of Police Scotland uh, has made clear his views in relation to the risk to public sa safety of pressing ahead with merger. At that point, Liam MacArthur is exceptionally important. We are, of course, uh, have, I have made this decision based on the advice from Police Scotland. Uh, it would be foolish of me to have ignored that advice uh, in terms of their concerns around ICT alignment and so on and so forth. Uh, and I think that is, uh, that is important to keep at the heart uh, very much of this. In, in terms of his other asks around uh, business cases uh, and so on and so forth, yes, whatever option we come forward with, uh, and, and, and that will be uh, with a consultation uh, with stakeholders. Of course, uh, I think it's important to give as much confidence around that model that we choose uh, to uh, explore. So I'll be happy to commit to ensuring uh, there is as much scrutiny of that option and as much transparency of that option to this parliament uh, as possible. Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Scottish Government remain committed to working fully with stakeholders as they have done so far? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I will look to do that, uh, even for those that, of course, very much so with those are, that have been in opposition of full integration, but also for those across uh, the Chamber. It's certainly worth uh, keeping that engagement going, but clearly already from the announcement of uh, my announcement of, of re-examining the options, uh, I've already had a number of organisations uh, come to me saying that they want to, to engage. So my door will be very much uh, open to that engagement uh, and I look forward uh, to, to, to seeing what uh, that engagement concludes in terms of the process moving forward. And John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The, the Cabinet Secretary has failed to address legitimate and ongoing concerns of BT officers and staff. Can the Cabinet Secretary detail what role that failure has played in his failure to deliver on the will of Parliament on this important issue? Cabinet Secretary. But, you know, if I had gone against Police Scotland's uh, advice to me uh, around the difficulties of getting a, a timescale and a timeline uh, for full integration, particularly the primary concern around ICT, but other concerns too, I, I don't doubt that John Finney would probably be the first one to pull me up in front of this Parliament to say that we had gone against Police Scotland's uh, advice. Uh, so, uh, you know, he will have to accept, as I have done, over a period of, of, of reflection uh, early on in this role, that uh, although that was the intention of the government for integration and the will of the parliament supported by uh, his party, it would be foolish, really foolish, to have ignored Police Scotland's uh, advice. I'm more than happy, of course, to speak to John Finney, uh, as I would with any other member, in, in, in more detail around some of their concerns. Uh, but the, 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 the path that I've chosen uh, to go down is very much based on the advice that Police Scotland uh, have given me. And in terms of giving more certainty to officers and staff in BTP. Uh, as I said, the sooner we can get on uh, with examining the other options uh, for, for devolution of railway policing in Scotland, uh, the better. Thank you. Question number two, Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions this has had with ScotRail and South Ayrshire Council regarding the impl Im implemented exclusion zone around Air Railway Station, which is causing disruption for many passengers, including those travelling south of Air to Girvan and Stranraer. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. <coughs> I discussed the situation with the Leader and Chief Executive of uh, South Ayrshire Council last week. Transport Scotland officials have engaged with senior officials at both the ScotRail Alliance and South Ayrshire Council on several occasions since the exclusion zone at Air Station has affected Platform 3 and 4. Additionally, Transport Scotland established a new task force, including other relevant directorates from the Scottish Government to support South Ayrshire Council in identifying solutions to the immediate, immediate safety concerns. Uh, the key objective is to ensure that a full rail service can be restored safely as soon as possible, but also that any long-term solutions contributes to the economic prosperity of the town centre 
and other affected areas. Emma Harper. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. The Air Station Hotel and the railway building is a structure majority owned by a Malaysian businessman, Mr Ung, along with Network Rail. My understanding is that Mr Ung has refused to engage with South Ayrshire Council to work to make this structure safe, which has resulted in Platform 3 and 4 being closed altogether. This means trains are unable to run between Air, Mabel, Girvan and Stranraer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what, if any, action the Scottish Government can take to make Mr Ung accountable for one of his many UK properties? Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely, officer, I recognise the significant disruption this uh, platform closure is causing to uh, Air Station and to a number of the other uh, stations, particularly Mabel, Girvan and uh, Stranra. As it stands, the Scottish Government has no powers to take action against the owner of this building. Uh, local authority, though, has powers under the Building Scotland Act 2003 to take action on owners where their building has become dangerous or fallen into a state of disrepair. South Ayrshire Council have used these powers, powers to serve a dangerous buildings notice and are currently working uh, to make the building safe and to allow the platforms to reopen as soon as possible. The member will appreciate that uh, building owners are ultimately responsible for the upkeep and safety of the buildings they own. Emma Harper. Again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. I have also had many constituents contact me regarding the disruption, including one young constituent in Stranraer not being able to get the train to university and others being unable to get to work. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore give a commitment that the Scottish Government will ensure appropriate alternative transport links are put in place and indeed monitored while the situation with Air Station is ongoing? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, I can give the member that assurance because ScotRail are presently providing a replacement uh, bus for rail uh, passengers wishing to travel from Air on to uh, Stranra, uh, passengers wishing to travel uh, to Stranra from Kilmarnock and vice versa are also being provided with a taxi uh, to and from Air at Station and for onward travel by bus. And ScotRail will continue to keep it under review to see whether there's any further action they can take in order to try and reduce the inconvenience to the travelling public. John Scott. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Minister is well aware of the much reduced rail service between Ayr and Glasgow, which affects my constituents in Ayr, Prestwick and Troon, and many others on the Ayr to Glasgow rail line. While I appreciate that circumstances can't change or different options be taken before a structural engineer's report is produced, can the Minister tell Parliament when this report will be produced and what his plans are for the services on this line if the station hotel at Air has to be demolished. If, on the other hand, the building can be saved, what support can the Scottish Government give to restoring or redeveloping the station hotel in Air? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, uh, ScotRail are continuing to keep the present uh, uh, emergency timetable in place under review to look at whether there are further measures they can take in order to address some of the issues, particularly around some of the uh, issues around um, uh, the number of people who are trying to use the service as it moves towards Glasgow Central, particularly around the Paisley area, uh, whether they can add additional carriages at a later stage. Uh, what I can also assure the member is that the responsibility here for the decision to apply an exclusion zone is for the local authority. Uh, and any change to that exclusion zone is a matter for the local authority. The assistance that the task force is providing is to ensure that appropriate measures are put in place to identify what action could be taken in order to reduce that exclusion zone. That work is ongoing at the present moment uh, with engineers. Once uh, South Ayrshire Council have that report, uh, they will share that with the task force to look at what action can then be taken in order to make sure that any measures that can be implemented are taken forward as quickly as possible. We will continue to support South Ayrshire Council in addressing these issues. So we're providing with legal advice and also uh, a, a buildings advice from our experts within the Scottish Government uh, so that they understand all of the responsibilities and the actions that they can take. Uh, but this report from engineers will allow us to then make a decision on whether the exclusion zone can then be reduced. And that will be a matter for South Ayrshire Council. But we will support them and provide them with what assistance we can to take that action forward once the report's been completed. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. <coughs> in April, I chaired a, a public meeting in Air Town Hall organised by local campaigner Esther Clark, packed out by residents frustrated at the demise of Air Station Hotel. Does the Cabinet Secretary understand the anger in the community at the utter neglect of, of the former hotel? And will the Scottish Government take action not only to ensure 
that the building is made safe so we can end the current rail chaos, but actually put in place a long-term plan to bring this historic building back into use for the benefit of the local community. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as a member will appreciate, the responsibility for the condition of the building lies with the private owner of this particular building, who has clearly neglected it over a very extended period of time. And I do recognise that South Ayrshire Council have also taken action to try and address these issues um, uh, earlier in the course of uh, the year without the success of engaging with, effectively with the uh, owner of uh, the building. As I just mentioned to uh, John Scott, the decision to apply an exclusion zone is the responsibility of the local authority. The plans that they then have for uh, the use of that building, working with the owner and the wider town centre redevelopment is a matter for South Ayrshire Council. What we are providing them with is the support and assistance that they require in order to make sure that we understand what action can be taken to reduce the exclusion zone, to get the platforms reopened, to get the train station operating back to its normal capacity as soon as possible. Once South Ayrshire have got that report completed and they're able to share that with at the task force, they'll be provided with additional support to make sure that action is taken forward as quickly as possible so we can get the station returned to its normal function. Thank you. Question number three, Murda Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how NHS boards ensure that patients' concerns regarding surgical practices are properly addressed. Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. NHS boards have governance and appraisal mechanisms for their clinicians. This includes the boards being responsible for a system of appraisal and job planning for each consultant. In 2017-18, boards implemented the revised NHS complaints procedure, which provides a formal route for patients and their families to raise concerns. The organisational duty of candour legislation came into force in Scotland on the 1st of April this year. The duty of candour legislation also requires organisations to provide an apology to those who have been harmed and to involve them in identifying organisational learning and improvements where necessary. Murdo Fraser. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response and welcome her to her, her new role. Uh, this week, uh, shocking details relating to the case of the NHS Tayside surgeon, Professor Sam Eljamel, were disclosed in a BBC investigation. Professor Eljamel is accused of making a series of mistakes while operating on patients at NHS Tayside. At the time, an external investigation concluded that he was injuring patients, but despite this, he was allowed to continue operating. It does appear that NHS Tayside had neither the audit systems in place to pick up on his mistakes or a decisive senior management team to prevent this from happening. What assurance can the Cabinet Secretary give us that in other Scottish health boards we will not see similar incidents where surgeons are free to operate despite concerns being raised about uh, their uh, abilities? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As I'm sure members will appreciate, there is a degree to which I am limited in what I can express here. But let me be really clear to uh, Mr Fraser and to the Chamber that any instance of harm incurred by any patient in our health service is a matter I take extremely seriously. We have a number of measures in place that boards should be following. It is worth mentioning the globally recognised Scottish Patient Safety Programme, which has had surgical safety as one of its work streams since it began and has led to over a 20% reduction in surgical mortality across Scotland. I have today asked for an assurance from all our health boards, from their chairs and chief executives, a joint assurance that all the steps that this government expects them to be following in terms of compliance with these measures and others are indeed being followed. And our chief medical officer and others will continue to pursue these matters to ensure that we have uh, the best patient safety that we possibly can in this country. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that, that full and very helpful uh, response? Uh, I don't know if she watched last night's BBC documentary and, and if, like me, she felt angry and sad for the patients who recounted their personal stories in that. We learned today from the Courier newspaper that Professor El Jamel is still holding himself out as working at Nine Wells Hospital, despite the fact his contact, contract there has been uh, severed. In wake of all the new evidence that's coming out, does the Scottish Government accept there's now the case for a fully independent investigation into these issues? Cabinet Secretary. What I do accept is, as I said before, that any instance of harm to a patient in our National Health Service is a matter of considerable concern, and I take it very seriously. What I am doing is reviewing the situation with respect to this particular instance and looking more widely across our boards, and in that I will give due consideration to what other further steps we might sensibly take 
in order to ensure that we have the level of patient safety across Scotland that we uh, aim for and that our statistics currently indicate that we have overall across the NHS. Thank you very much. And that